Hello, sports fans. It is Thursday, May the 14th, the year 2015. And as always, a lot to get to in the sports world, so let's get it going right now. Great to be back with you guys. Hope you guys are doing well. Let's start in the NHL, where last night at Madison Square Garden, the New York Rangers beat the Washington Capitals 2-1 in overtime. The Rangers win the series four games to three, and they will play the Tampa Bay Lightning starting on Saturday afternoon in the Garden. What a tremendous game this was last night. Back and forth we, we went. Ovechkin scores in the first period to put Washington up 1-0. Remember, Ovechkin guaranteed the Capitals were going to win this uh, game. The Rangers come back in the second period. Hayes scores to make it 1-1. Third period, back and forth we went. Chances on both sides. No one can break through. Both goalies playing great. Lundqvist and Holby both playing tremendous hockey. We go to overtime. Washington is swarming all over the Rangers. I mean, they were swarming. And Lundqvist absolutely stood on his head to keep the Rangers alive in this game. Then the Rangers win a big base off. They take a shot. The rebound comes out to step on, and he puts it in the back of the net. And the Rangers win the game, and they advance. What a tremendous win by the New York Rangers. And Lundqvist stood on his head in that overtime last night. Washington, it looked like it was only a matter of time before they were going to score. They were swarming all over the Rangers, but they just couldn't put the puck in the back of the net. Lundqvist absolutely stood on his head, and he can do that. He can steal games for you. I thought both goalies were tremendous. This was a tremendous hockey game, and the Rangers pulled it out. And like I said, they will advance to play Tampa Bay. Heartbreaking loss for Washington. Again, Washington in a series is up 3-1. They lose the series. Washington, this has been their history. Now, I thought Washington had a nice year. They finished well in the regular season. They beat a tough Islander team. They won the seventh game there. But this is another heartbreaking series loss for the Capitals. Another heartbreaking loss for Ovechkin. You have a 3-1 lead in the series. They had multiple chances to knock the Rangers out. They could not do it. And as far as all the uh, predictions by Ovechkin, as far as the guarantee, listen, I, I take guarantees with a grain of salt now. Everyone makes them. Most of the time, they're wrong. I mean, most of the time when you guarantee something, these athletes, they get them wrong. I mean, to me, guarantees aren't what they used to be. I remember, you know, Joe Namath's guarantee and, you know, Mark Messier's guarantee. Those guarantees meant something. To me, guarantees went out the window with uh, Patrick Ewing. Patrick Ewing at one point made like 10 guarantees in a row that didn't come true. So to me, you can throw guarantees right in the trash. They don't mean anything. To me, they just put more pressure on you. I wish the athletes would just shut up and stop making guarantees. There's no need for it. So now that Ovechkin uh, guaranteed the Capitals were going to win and they lost, what happens to him? Does he get exiled to Siberia? I mean, what exactly happens when you make a guarantee and it doesn't come true? What happens to you? Nothing? So what's the point of actually making a guarantee? You're just putting more pressure on yourself and the team, but this was a heartbreaking loss for Washington, heartbreaking loss for Ovechkin, great win by the Rangers, Lundqvist was tremendous, and the Rangers, two years in a row, have come back from 3-1 deficits, they do it here, last year on their way to the Stanley Cup Finals, they came back from 3-1 to Pittsburgh, so give the Rangers all sorts of credit, gritty, Gutty win by the New York Rangers. Heartbreaking loss for Washington. So the Rangers will open up uh, at home on Saturday afternoon against Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa Bay beat Montreal uh, four games to two. They beat them 4-1 in Game 6. I thought Tampa Bay played their best game of the playoffs in Game 6. Tampa and the Rangers should be a good long series. Could go either way. I don't like that they're starting on Saturday afternoon. I wish that was a night game. Really hard around here in New York. We're finally getting some nice weather. You know, say we have a 70-degree day around here. Hard to have, you know, a playoff hockey in the middle of that kind of day. But we're just going to have to deal with it. So Tampa Bay and the Rangers... At Madison Square Garden, Game 1 on Saturday afternoon should be a good long series. Could go either way. And, of course, Anaheim and Chicago, they're ready to get going as well. That should be great hockey. Those are two powerhouses in the Western Conference. All right, so that's where you are in your NHL. you got some really good stuff in the Eastern and Western Conference Finals coming up in your NHL. As far as the NBA last night, big, big win for the Atlanta Hawks at home. Horford hits a shot at the buzzer. Hawks beat the Wizards by one point. Hawks are now up three games to two. Wall did play for Washington, so that was a positive. This was a gut-wrenching loss for the Wizards. They could have won this game, 
Pierce hits the big three to put him up one, but then off a rebound, Horford puts in the shot at the buzzer, and the Hawks win by one point. Hawks now up three games to two, so they're in good shape now. They got two chances to close out. The Wizards will keep an eye on Wall. He did play last night, but still, he's got five fractures in his hand. It's asking a lot for him to play big time. We'll see what the Wizards can do. They are down three games to two. As far as the other Eastern Conference series, Cleveland is up 3-2 over Chicago. LeBron was absolutely awesome in Game 5. They say Gasol will play in Game 6, so we'll keep an eye on that. That's a story with all these NBA series. I mentioned this the other day. Who's healthy? Who's not playing? Who's out? Who's playing hurt? I mean... Cleveland, we know Love is out. Irving is limping around out there. LeBron's got some ailments. I mean, Gasol's been out for Chicago. We know Rose can get hurt at any time. In the Atlanta-Washington series, you know, you got Wall. Who knows about him? And then in the Western Conference, Golden State is now up 3-2 against Memphis. Allen didn't play for Memphis last night. Without Allen on the floor, Memphis has no chance. He's their defensive stopper. He did some really good things on defense in games two and three when Memphis won. But without him on the floor, Golden State looked like, you know, they smelled, you know, blood in the water. They were shooting threes all over the place. They were getting back to loosey-goosey basketball, and they dominated the last two games. Golden State in the driver's seat now up 3-2. We'll keep an eye on Allen. I don't know if he gets back for a game six. And then the Clippers are up 3-2 against Houston. They have a chance to close out Houston uh, tonight in L.A. I expect them to do it. But you got to keep an eye on that Paul injury. Remember, Paul's had the hamstring. So a lot of series in the NBA, just about all of them, there's a key injury here. And even Houston, they're playing without Beverly. He's their best defensive player. I never remember this many injuries in the NBA. It seems like the last few years, there's just a rash of injuries, especially to big-time players. I mean, you've got a big-time injury in just about all these series. Wall for Washington. I mean, LeBron is, like I said, got an injury. Irving's got an injury. Love out for the playoffs. Gasol's missed games. Allen's now uh, missed games for Memphis. I mean, uh, Beverly out for Houston. Paul's missed games for the Clippers. You've got injuries all over the place. Who's going to be healthy? When I look at it right now, to me, the team that is the most, most healthy has got to be the favorite, and that's Golden State. They're the most healthy. They got everyone, you know, you know, in the lineup, uh, you know, every night. They can count on a set lineup. These other teams, it's who's in, who's out, who's playing hurt. So to me, it's still Golden State's championship to lose. I think it's going to be Golden State and Cleveland when all is said and done. But we do have a long way to go. Remember, all these series at 3-2, and they can, they can flip on a dime. We've seen that quickly. You know, one shot flips the whole series. So that's where you are in your NBA uh, as far as Major League Baseball, listen, there were some good performances last night. How about Kluver, Kluber for uh, Cleveland last night? What a performance he had. He was absolutely amazing on the mound for Cleveland last night, and Cleveland really needed it. They've been struggling. I also was watching the Cubs the last few days. They dusted the Mets the last couple of days. The Cubs look like a much improved team. Keep an eye on them. Epstein's building a team for the future. The Cubs, I know, listen, I know they haven't won in a million years, but I think the Cubs' future is bright. So Cub fans, hang in there. I think the future is bright for you. They did look impressive dusting the Mets the last few days. So that's just a couple notes in, the, uh, in Major League Baseball. So you guys are all caught up. You guys are all set. I will be back with you guys probably early next week. We'll recap what went on uh, over the weekend with the NBA and the NHL. We're just going, getting going in the third round with the NHL. And, of course, we're wrapping up the second round of the NBA. You guys have a happy and healthy uh, weekend. You guys stay safe. I'll be back with you on Monday. We'll recap it all. Talk to you then. Take care.